Hi, in this section we are going to take a look at a very important concept for our API. We are going to look at our API from another aspect. We are going to dig into security of our API. This section covers the authentication options and how to implement it in APIs. Before starting, I would love to remind you the utility features of middleware. Shortly, this section is all about authentication. And let's get started. We are going to answer this question, is it good practice to build our own protocol? It may sound irrelevant, but we are going to cover this later along the section. At first glance, authentication looks easy. You ask for username and password and check if these credentials match with the information you keep on your server and grant access if there is a match. So easy, right? We may run into some problems when it comes to authenticate users. What about when someone makes a request to our API and deletes some of the resources? We need to validate the users before letting them use our API. But how? Do we really need to embed username and password into the API? What happens if the application is compromised? Is the user credentials at risk of being stolen? And one more thing, what if someone forgets his or her own password and needs to reset it? Does the application stop working then? Or should it? Now here let's take a look at the big picture. There are numerous authentication options out there and some of them are really complex. Some of them require work on both the client and server side and some of them are one time use. We can use any option we want. But here I have to tell you that it is not a good design choice to build your own standard for authentication. Just use a standard. There is absolutely no reason to create your own protocol. Even the leading experts don't build their own, instead they use standards. There are also two benefits of using standards. First, there are always supporting tools for your needs. Tools like Postman and Runscope already have built-in options for authentication. Such a great blessing. Second benefit is much more important, it's confidence. Some frameworks pro provide great confidence. They are well defended against attacks and break-ins. There are maintainers for these frameworks. They are constantly working on adapting and improving these frameworks. I can't say that they are perfect, but most of the reasonable attacks have been tried on these frameworks and the maintainer adapted them in response to these various attacks. They have probably tried more variations than you and I can imagine. Can you say the same for a protocol which you are yourself going to develop? Absolutely not. There are always benefits and trade-offs for each option. In the next video we are going to take a look at some of the options and their trade-offs. Now let's take a look at some of the common authentication options and the trade-offs behind them. We are going to discuss three commonly used approaches, the API key, account ID and token and OAuth version 2 specifically. The first common approach is a simple API key. This is a long unique string which is sent along on every request. Some less secure APIs will add it directly as a URL parameter. Well, that works and it's easy for the server to parse but remember that this is not secure because we will embed it in server logs, routes, caches and everything along those lines. A better, approach, a better approach is to use it in the headers as a bearer token. This is a simple HTTP header which specifies the key. Next, some APIs take a step further and they use account identification and account token, like a password. Something that resembles a username and password feels more secure. This doesn't offer any significant advantage over a simple API key, in fact, as long as both are passed along the headers, they are roughly the same. Finally, we can take an approach like all out version 2 specifically. Among all the options, this is the most powerful, also the hardest one to implement. It is said that this is the gold standard among the API providers. Everyone from Twitter, Facebook, Google use it on a daily basis. 
Like the others, this also passes tokens on headers, but the most valuable aspect of all out is the concept of consent. For example, if you use these famous mobile applications like Twitter, Facebook, you probably saw a message saying something like that, this app will be able to do a list of things. When you authenticate using OAuth, you can often give fine strict permissions on what an application can or and cannot do. Implementing OAuth is beyond the scope of this course, but you can learn about it on the internet and with some books as well. But for this course, we would implement authentication with a simple API key and embed it in the header as a bearer token. We will understand that there are more options available.